Howdy. Today is March 11th, uh, 2021. And this is the third time that I've tried to shoot this video. Um, the first time there was no reception. Uh, the second time, apparently the first 12 minutes had no sound. <laughs> so here we go with, with number three. I have some really exciting news, exciting to me anyway. Uh, um, I don't have to have the pick line put in. I didn't have to have the put, pick line put in today. Um, it was a very dramatic scene. I, you know, I just cut it, cut to the chase there with the, in delivering the, the news. So uh, picture this. For the past week, I've been known that I've had to do this. I had this appointment today. Uh, called yesterday to find out what time it was. It's supposed to be at 9:30. Um, I spent the past three days at the hot springs up in the um, Miracle Hot Springs up in the Sierras, and you know, kind of getting ready for this whole process. And um, I was feeling very heavy, I have to say. Uh, so the pick line apparently is. A kind of a, it's kind of like a port. Um, they stick a um, a line in your arm that goes up into your chest cavity or something. I don't know. I didn't look at the whole picture, thankfully. Um, so it the purpose of it was to. Um, I'm I'm scheduled to get. Uh, have six infusions um, of a what was to be a, a three drug cocktail. Two would be chemo, and one would be this uh, immunotherapy drug. Um, one is one of the chemos is the one that same one I had last year. This is platinum, this platinum based uh, a drug that that um, you know I I had last year. I got irradiated, so I have irradiated platinum infused to every one of the cells of my body. And I, I, I my little mental bubblegum game playing, I um, like to joke that I was platinum man now, you know. Um, but as it turns out, I'm going to I have more, more platinum in me because they've scheduled six infusions of this um, over the next uh, 18 weeks. And... Um, so I've had that before. Uh, the immunotherapy drug is supposed to um, uh, make the cancer visible to my immune system because all, all, most cancers have this uh, elaborate strategy to make themselves invisible to your immune system so that your immune system doesn't react to them. And uh, they figured out a way to, to change that up. So kind of excited to be go, get going with that because that was my initial strategy when I first got the diagnosis in September of 2019 was to try to um, build up my immune system and have it do its job. But um, then I discovered just before I started treatment last uh, a little over a year ago that um, there was no way that was going to happen because the the cancer had uh, the, the excuse me the the um, the virus had fused uh, this virus that's a, it's a variant of the um, human papilloma virus HPV virus um, that I was apparently exposed to like 25 more than 25 years ago had its DNA had fused with the DNA of my throat uh, cells and um, so to my immune system I was you know the, the uh the cancer was me so um but this immunotherapy drug is supposed to be able to reverse that yippee so i'm all about that i'm all on board with that the third drug uh which i'm not even going to try to pronounce um i was told last week that i would have to get this pick line put in and that it would make it possible for me to, um, you have to infuse this drug in your system over a 48 hour period, that's what I was told. And so they, they give you um, a little pouch that's got a pump in it 
and it, it it's supposed to do that over a 48 hour period. So that would have had to happen after each one of these um, six infusions. Um, so picture this, <laughs> I, go, I go in there this morning and I got, I was there an hour early. Um, I get finally at, you know, when it gets close to nine o'clock, I get, go and knock on the door um, and the nurse comes and she opens the door and I walk into the room and there's this, uh, there's two beds and one of them has a patient in it already and the other one I guess is for me and so we walk over there and sure enough there's, they start pulling out all this stuff that I'm supposed to, you know, use for my um, procedure and uh, so I'm like, wow, this is, this is really getting serious. Um, she pulls the bed, the covers back, and and uh, so I start taking my clothes off, and she's like, "Oh, just just the top, because we're only doing the the top." And I'm like, "Okay, cool." So I climb up in the bed, and <clears throat> and uh, um, she pulls the covers up, and they take my blood pressure, which is really good, by the way. It's uh, 121 over 75, so I'm. I'm uh, very healthy and strong as an ox, right? Uh, except, uh, except I'm still killing myself. So, um, which is the same thing that happened last year. Um, so, she's prepping me, and and uh, she has me sign the the release form and everything that I understand what they're going to do, the procedure and everything like that. I sign the release form give it back to her she puts on the bib and she starts to you know get ready to uh get down to business <laughs> and there's a knock on the door and uh the other nurse goes over and she opens the door and it's my doctor right and uh he she, she uh, my new oncologist and he's like excuse me but um can i have a, a word with the patient before you begin and uh uh, he's got this white paper in his hand and he comes over and he goes, um, I have to apologize. Uh, I have, uh, I, I, I may have, um, misled you. Um, I was just going over, uh, this, uh, uh, procedure, um, this paper on, on, the um, the protocol of this, uh, drug cocktail that we've been planning to give you. And, um, I, you know, I told you that, you know, you'd be able to leave the hospital with this pump and, you know, get pumped over 30, uh, 24, uh, excuse me, 48 hours. And that's what the pick line's for and everything. And, uh, but I was just reviewing this study about the efficacy of this cocktail. And, and it actually says that you would have to uh, remain in the hospital for four days. <laughs> like oh Jesus he says yeah so you would come in on Monday and uh and and start the regular six hour infusion but then you would have to stay until Friday um and you'd have to do this for each of the six uh infusions that we have scheduled for you and I'm like oh man and I've got my double mask on and I'm like I'm like he says I'm I'm really sorry um that I I I miss misrepresented this um i said uh so um make a long story short i said so what what uh so this pick line is basically for that 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 second chemo drug right and he says yeah and um this is was supposed to be so I could take could leave the hospital and I have to stay in the hospital at all, just come in for the infusion. And um th this would be uh basically I said why not just do I said just because we're we're spitballing here, you're right. Why, why, 
what about just doing the the chemo that I did before, the cisplatin that I responded what really well to last year, and it got rid of the the that first tumor in the first eleven days, you know, and and the uh, immunotherapy. Why don't we just do that? <laughs> just, and um, he says, well, you know, uh, we're still waiting to get back your the the test that we did on the biopsy tissue. Um, that would, you know, if you get a high score in that, um, we could just do without the chemo altogether. Um, uh, and we'll, we should know in about a week. And I was like, yeah, that's cool. But I, I, I feel that it would be really good until we know about that. Let's, let's just do the, the cisplatin and the immunotherapy drug, because I feel like, I really feel like if we can do um, the, the cisplatin that it's going to pretty much take care of this thing in at least, uh, uh, two infusions, if not the, you know, if not before. So that way we, you know, we've got our, we've got ourselves covered. And if it becomes necessary to do the, the, add the third one, um, you know, the other, uh, chemo drug, then we can, we still have, we can still do that after the second infusion. Um, how does that sound? <laughs> you know? He says that's that sounds that sounds pretty good because, um, uh, you know, if your score comes back and you get a really good, um, a really good score, we can just you know uh, get rid of the chemo's altogether and just focus on the on the immunotherapy. And I was like, great. The downside of the this uh, immunotherapy thing is is it is it could actually, uh, he told me that it could take um, two years of uh, infusions. The upside is those in, the infusion of just the, that, that drug is only two hours instead of the six hours. Um, and, you know, there are people that don't go through the whole two years, uh, but we'll see. So that would be an infusion every three weeks for two years. Um, I don't think it's going to come to that, but, you know, anyway, uh, we, we fist bumped on our new plan and, um, and I, I jumped out of that bed and, and I'm getting dressed and everything. And I gave him a big hug and I was, uh, it was, it's been a very good day. Let's put it that way. I, I, I don't have any more holes in my body than I, than I did when I woke up this morning. That's always a good plus. That's always a plus. That's how you definitely want to live, right? So, um, this means no pick line, don't need to, um, have a, a, a nurse come and, or me go to a nurse every week to have the, the dressing changed and all that kind of stuff. Um, the hygiene factor, you know, being able to, having to, to bathe every day is not as much of a, uh, of an imperative. Um, and, uh, I've, the other news is I, I, I got the apartment um, in Venice Beach on the boardwalk in the building that I used to live in. And uh, 1305 Oceanfront Walk used to be the Venice Beach Beach Hotel. Now they're calling it Boardwalk Flats, whatever. It's a 112-year-old building. Um, Charlie Chaplin used to keep his, his uh, lovers in. And uh, I really love it. I've, I've um, written and published, I don't know, about... 15 books there and uh, a couple of movies. Um, the energy there is just really good. And I got, I actually got a chance to look in the room today. Um, and uh, so it's 308. It's, it's on the alley, but it's, it's uh, up. So there's, there's an ocean view. And uh, as I said, it's right on the boardwalk. And the main reason why I'm getting, getting this is, is so that I can, um, uh, you know, I can walk on the beach every day. And, uh, initially it was so that I could, could bathe every day. But, um, uh, I was hoping that I would get a room that has a, a bathtub, but because after the second infusion, it, it becomes really, it became last year, it became really necessary to like soak every day as a relief of the effects of the, the, um, the treatment. And, um, 
but this room doesn't have a, a bathtub so I'll probably just be there for the month and in case uh, another room opens up that has a bathtub uh, if not I'll move on um, and, uh, and so I gave them my notice today <laughs> that I was you have to give them 30 days notice let them know that you're you're gonna if you're gonna move out and it's on a month-to-month -month lease so um, and it works out to be about eighty dollars a day um, which is about what I would s uh, spend at the Motel 6 at, uh, out by uh, out by uh, LAX it's at eighty dollars a day and they have a friggin bathtub it's but it's a ways from the beach um, but uh, and luckily for me I have a friend that wanted a an original painting um, and uh, so I painted them the painting and there um, the money from that sale is what's paying for the apartment um, and so I put down a deposit on it today and I'm, I'm slated to move in on the 16th. Um, the 16th is the day before the infusion starts and it's the day I have to go to the hospital and get a, a blood uh, get a blood draw. You know, they check your blood to make sure that, uh, you know, the, um, to determine what, how much uh, um, of the drugs you're going to be given um in, in especially in relation to what your body weight is and all that kind of stuff at least that's what i've been told so um talk about relief man also the other thing is um i wasn't really sure if i'd be able to to do uh things like um fly <laughs> with that pick line in because uh i don't really i don't think they really understand what 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 entails like you could get knocked you could you know fall down and get dragged and you know sweat a lot and really hard to keep that clean keep that you know that pick line thing clean um under those circumstances uh not to mention the fact that i wouldn't be able to sit in the hot spring um or it'd be very challenging to sit in a hot spring with that hole in my arm. Um, but now all that's history. So we're good. Um, so I want to talk about something I talked about in the video earlier that you'll never see because, it, you know, half the sound is gone. Um, over the past couple of days, I, I started to get... Uh, you know, there's this there's this thing that happens to pregnant women, well, women that have babies, right? Is uh, they forget there are certain chemicals that their body gives them after they've given birth to help them forget the um, you know hellacious pain and suffering that they go through in childbirth. Um, and it's you know it's kind of a a, a cosmic strategy to to prime them for for having baby having more babies. You know, and uh, I, I think I've I've I got some of those drugs because I forgot. You know, or I'm at least in the past couple of days, as, as we get closer to the reality of this uh, new treatment round, I f have started to remember some of the you know things that are connected to this process. Yeah, that you know, are... some of the things that have been coming to me about this. Um, you know, I've been remembering what it was like, um, some of the more challenging aspects and in a nutshell, uh, you know, for the first round and, and up until, uh, you know, I started to suspect that the cancer was back in January, you know, I was thinking that I had, you know, gone through this death transformation rebirth process, this shamanic journey. And uh, I sure have, but I thought I was in the rebirth part. <laughs> and it turns out that I'm I'm still in the uh, the death part, and um, leading to the transformation, or at least in the transformation part, because uh, we're we're double dipping. <laughs> um, so, 
what I said earlier is that there, there's two, you know, when you have cancer, there's, there's two aspects of it. One is the cancer itself, which is a life-threatening disease. And no matter what they tell you, you know, whether they say, oh, you're gonna, you, you have this long to live and you're going to die and less and such, you have this many months, whatever, or they tell you that, oh, we're going to, you have, you have the opportunity to have a 100% cure, um, there's no guarantees. You know, I, we all know people that were told they were going to die and they never did and they're still around and living a healthy, healthy happy life. Um, and we all know people that were told that they, um, you know, their prognosis was really good and they ended up dying, you know. Um, a big part of those people that end up dying is because of the... Uh, the cure, you know, um, as many people die of the cure as they do of the of the cancer, you know. But you have a choice. If you don't do, if you don't attempt the cure, you're definitely going to die of the cancer, and it's not going to be pretty. It never is, and um, so you take your chances with something that will, in theory, almost kill you. Um, there were several times when I went through what I went through last year where I, I, where death revealed itself to me. And I've spoken about it elsewhere <clears throat> in this chronicle. And, uh, the past couple of days, I've, a couple of things have happened that have kind of reminded me of where I am in this process. And, uh, we're we're definitely on the on the second the second dip into this confrontation um, with death, um, transformation, and rebirth, and I, I recognize that now. Um, this you know this cancer it, uh, from the beginning has been you know it's in my neck. Uh, which is throat chakra, right? And throat chakra is trusting in the truth of your relationship with divinity, with the source of all that is. It's um, your relationship with with the Father, right? The cosmic Father a aspect. It's um, the Holy Spirit, your relationship with the Holy Spirit, or the Spirit of Holiness, the Manifester. So it's all about manifesting. It's all about wealth, um, uh, realizing your true wealth, um, but it's also about the voice, you know, realizing your voice. And, um, and that has been tremendously true, as you can tell from this, from this, uh, this story I shared earlier. Um, again and again, through this process, I have had to be my own advocate. I have had to speak my, my truth and, um, uh, sound my voice. Um, I've had to speak up for myself and to advocate uh, um, as much as the doctors do. And um, like in this case today, you know, I, if I uh, had gone in there and just done whatever the doctors said, you know, I'd be, I'd have, a, I'd have a hole in my arm and I would be looking at having uh, to um, uh, be in the hospital for four days, uh, for 24 days and over the next 18 weeks, you know, uh, four days after each of the, the six infusions, you know, um, and I have this other chemo drug that I've, I'm not familiar with, but I understand that it's a very, very, the, it has a lot of side effects and uh, I hadn't even looked at those and um, because I didn't want to look at those. <laughs> and now I don't have to look at what I'm missing. Thank you very much. But um, uh, the same with if I hadn't spoken up when this, uh, this latest uh, cancer diagnosis, uh, rec recurrent diagnosis had, had, was brought to me, was brought to my awareness by, the, by that doctor, the ENT doctor, you know, she um, said, well, Mr. English, your first, 
you, you, your options are uh, surgery uh, followed by chemo and radiation. And I was like, no, <laughs> because, and the reason I said that wasn't just because I, I'm, you know, just pulling out of my butt. It, it's because I said to her, you're saying the exact opposite as the attending physician um, when I was first diagnosed with this. And she had to review the notes to see that I, what I was saying was exactly true. And, um, you know, and I said, let's, let's, how about this? I'm opting for the exact opposite of that, um, that sequence you, you mentioned. Let's go for the chemo uh, radiation if necessary. And if neither, if all else fails, then we'll talk about, you know, surgery. Um, so, you know, this, that's just two examples in this whole process, um, any number of which, you know, could have uh, ended me if I had just gone along with what was being presented, um, you know, I, I, would, I wouldn't be here. You know, I'd be an, a lot worse off, you know. So um, I recognize that I, you know, one of the things I noticed after, after my, uh, um, the first round is, uh, of treatments and everything is so my, my voice got deeper, <laughs> you know, maybe it was cause that tumor wasn't in the back of my mouth anymore, but, um, you know, it just, it, it just goes to, it's, it's just a major emphasis on this whole throat chakra thing, you know, that, a big part of my um, my journey, in, and, and the reason one of, one of the reasons why I call this a shamanic journey is what you probably don't know is that while you know I'm an astrologer, and all through this whole period of um, going through the the before even the, the the year and a half before I was diagnosed, I was symptomatic. And um, from from back then until now, Pluto, um, the you know the planet that that has to do with you know, that rules Scorpio in the eighth house, the planet that has to do with divine communion through sexuality, death, transformation, rebirth, hidden knowledge, shared resources, power, immortality, reveling in the great mystery, and sharing out its secrets. Pluto has been crossing my ascendant. And this doesn't happen to everybody in their lifetime because Pluto takes 248 years to go around the sun. And, um, but it's happening to me uh, at, this t at this time. And, and this whole thing is a manifestation. I know as an astrologer that this whole thing is, an, is a manifestation of that energy. Um, the energy potential of Pluto crossing one's ascendance is... is you know the the death transformation rebirth process, and this is where it where it's uh, um, how it's manifesting for me. And for me in this lifetime, it has to do with with realizing my true wealth, worth, and um, realizing my voice. You know, so I guess in a way, you know, me doing these videos is part of that process. You know, sharing the the chron chronicling this journey, and uh, and you know sharing it with whoever it might do some good with down the road and around the corner. You know, so anyway, um, I one of the things that has um, uh, in this process, uh, in this death transformation rebirth process. Um, Remember, I was talking about how, you know, Pluto and Scorpio are all about, you know, hidden knowledge, you know, esoteric knowledge um, and the great mystery. One, one faces the great mystery. And it's also about immortality. Immortality is, you know, what transcends death. Right. And in that process, I've been looking at death. I've been looking at my own death. I've been confronted by death itself. Um, as I said, you know, I've, um, death has revealed itself to me several times through this process. Um, one day in particular, there were at least uh, two, if not three, uh, 
moments when that where I just saw that if things didn't go you know in the way that they ultimately did that that I wouldn't be around much longer um, so part of this this is uh part of this process and maybe it's you know maybe it's not just this process that I'm going through maybe it's a process that everybody's going through you know with the COVID and keeping our distance from one another and everything like that it just kind of makes us sensitive more sensitive to one another and to the world and everything but I have have been experiencing a tremendous sensitivity to the energy signatures of everybody and everything around me and you know I I, I have to be very I've, I've had to be very judicious about um you know, the sort of influences, energetic influences that I, I open myself to. And that means that there are times when there, you know, people try to reach out to me that I, I just, I don't have it to respond or I don't have, I, I can't enter into that energy. And it's nothing against them or nothing about them. It ain't about them. You know, it's, it's, it's just what I need to do for me, for my own healing and everything like that. And I hope that that is understandable um, and that people can appreciate that um, because I can't have it any other way. I can't do uh, anything more like, um, you know, last year I noticed that there were situations where um, if there's one thing that this situation for me has revealed that that this situation requires and that that is to if there's a, one time in your life we have to be selfish this would be that time um you have to be self-centered you have to look out for yourself i have to look out for myself and i have to advocate for myself and that means that there are you know there are some people i've ha i've had to you know mute and um that's not my way usually but it hasn't been but there are you know healthy boundaries healthy boundaries because i've i found that that you know even the most well-meaning people at times they bring their they bring everybody brings their their complete world into every situation and um sometimes people have a tendency to make what's going on with me about them and um that's fine for them but it's not always good for me um and i've had to uh, sometimes call people on it and other times I just don't have the, I don't even have the energy to do that. And, and, uh, last year I, I had that happen with somebody very close to me and I tried several times to have that conversation and, um, it never went well. It never, so eventually I had to like, you know, flip the switch and, uh, which, you know, has, it's, it's, it's not something that I relish having to do. Um, so I'm just mentioning, I'm kind of, you know, I'm just being real here. Um, as, as real as I can be, because, uh, I think that that's what we all benefit. That's when, where the, where the, the harvest is in, in, in being, and being as real as we possibly can in all, especially these kinds of situations. Um, cause I, I I literally have nothing to lose but what needs to be lost. So, um, get this this tremendous sensitivity coming on, and uh, the, one of the benefits of it is is the insights that come. Um, and uh, I'm I'm doing my best to re record those what those insights are. Um, the great mystery, right? So, um, in my writings and, and postings and whatnot, um, I've got a couple of projects that I'm really looking forward to um, bring to fruition during this period, and I'll I'll keep up with it as much as I possibly can over the uh, through the whole thing, um, and out the other end. Uh, I don't anticipate dying anytime soon uh, in the physical, but there are certainly parts of me that are going to die. That is the process of transformation, you know. Mm. And uh, the only thing that dies is what needs to. 
So anyway, uh, time to push on. I'll, uh, I will certainly um, make, uh, you know, keep you up updated if anything new shows up. Um, we're looking at the 17th for the first infusion, the 16th for my blood draw, and the day that I move into the 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 room on the on the boardwalk, and uh, for the month. And um, I've told them, you know, after after that month, I'm I'm gonna, you know, unless something opens up that has a bathtub, I'm 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 gonna be moving out to get a bathtub because I gotta soak, man. So that's what's up. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting uh, anybody who's, um, you know, um, answered the call and. Uh, you know, contributed to my GoFundMe, David's Wonder Fund campaign. Thank you so much. Um, uh, while the medical part of this, most of it anyway, is being covered by Medi-Cal, uh, luckily for me, the week before I got the diagnosis, I found out I was eligible for Medi-Cal. So, yippee! Um, the rest of it, you know, without that, I, I, I don't know what I would have done because, uh, but the universe did apparently. Um, the rest of it has come, um, you know, through these donations uh, to support the rest of my life. Uh, you know, uh, my recovery from the first round and, um, and now, you know, this immerse, immersion into the second round of, you know, just covering my life expenses and, and uh, it, I got to tell you that it, the peace of mind that comes from knowing that I don't have to like scratch around figuring out how I'm going to pay a friggin' bill while I'm dealing with these issues is, it's just, it's priceless. And I, I, that's, I, I really want to communicate that and let people know just how, how grateful and what an impact it's had on my life. You know, I want to say something about um, the flying. Uh, I saved up my money um, to learn how to fly, and I learned, um, I started in September at Torrey Pines Glider Port down in, down in San Diego, and by December I had um, passed the, uh, what's known as the P2 certification that enables me to fly without, cer without under, without being under um, supervision, and um, talk about priceless, you know, being able to just knowing that I can, you know, I've got my glider in the back here, and 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 uh, my future is going to be spent. Um, a fair amount of it will be as much of it as possible will be in the sky, you know. That's that's where I felt the most at home. And uh, from the moment I left the cliff the first time, I knew I was in the right place doing the right thing. And uh, the people that I are my people, the, the other pilots, they, they're my people, you know. And uh, it's so, it's it makes so much, you know, there's so many times since I started learning how to fly that I, I I, uh, I find myself just sort of having been in a trance, r recounting flights and, and figuring out how I can do it better and what I, what I, you know, what I did there and what I would do again in this way. And it's just, I have much better daydreams <laughs> than I ever have had in my life. And one of those little mental bubblegum things is, is like, I get these ideas about all these places that I've been throughout my life that I could fly now, you know. And I'm really looking forward to going back to the Cape this summer and flying the National Seashore. Um, I understand people fly there are, are flying there right now. Um, I'm really looking forward to flying the Blue Ridge Parkway. Um, I'm really looking forward to flying Kitty Hawk. You know, that's another National Seashore that is 
uh, um, yeah. And then, you know, whenever we can leave the country, I mean, I heard about a place that a really great launch place um, in, in Vancouver, Canada, you know, where you, you launch, you, you take a tram up and you, you, you launch and you land in the city. I'm like, I'm there, you know? Um, so, you know, I have, a, I had, I, I was like, envisioning how you could I could fly in Israel you know you could fly off the off the Golan Heights and land on the beach of uh the Sea of Galilee you know I mean like little things like that you know I'm like how how would I um you could probably fly off you could fly off of Glastonbury Tor (laughs) that would be so cool anyway you you see what goes on in this 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 mind it's just Um, I feel very, uh, fulfilled and alive about this. And if I never got to fly again, um, you know, I, I have flown. You can't take that shit away from me, man. (laughs) There is nothing like stepping into the sky or having the wind just pick you up into the sky. It's just... No matter what it looks like, all those videos that I post, it's nothing, it's even more amazing in real life, you know, and it resounds throughout my life, you know, because like right now I'm thinking about flying, you know, it's crazy. All right. All right. We're going to cut this off. Um, Thanks for watching. Thanks for giving a hoot. Um, So let's do my favorite part here. Thank you very much. Remember, we love you.